Hi, I'm Travel Grandma. In this video, I'd like to show you a few things that I've learned and some things that I'm doing a little bit differently on this trip. I hope you enjoy it and gain a lot of tips from what I'm about to share. So I got a new purse and while I was cleaning out my old one, I came across this ticket. And I had gotten this at a Zoltar machine when I was with Cheryl on my last trip, but I never read it. So I'm going to read it today. Let's see what it says. Now is the time to start that new project you have been contemplating. Your deliberation will pay off in the long run because doubt is the father of invention and the key to knowledge. This newfound industry pays debts, while if you despair, you will only increase them. The time is right now to get going. If you are to move the world, first you must move yourself. If you find yourself working too hard to achieve your goal, you may find basic truth. The great person with vigor would demand the rightness of things, timeless of action, and priority of method. In this way, power does not become sheer force. You will be surprised at what you will accomplish. Let's see what my numbers are. 46, 17, 48, 20. Oh, I can't really read that one. That's either 13 or 18. 13 it looks like. And 11. Interesting. So what do you think? Unless you're rolling around in the dirt, to save on the amount of trips you need to take to the laundromat, this is called Wear It, Air It. One of the things that I'm finding on this trip is that I am not using this tea kettle very much at all. I've only used it so far to heat the water for my hot water bottle because it has a spout. But if I had a pot that had a spout on it, I wouldn't need this at all because I'm using my butane stove for everything now. A lot of times when I am just out and about and I don't want to carry my large water container, I may just grab a, a plastic bottle and refill it and it makes it so easy with my water spout here. This is an electric USB water pump that I secured in here with a little screw so it wouldn't wobble. And I have a five gallon water container here. This is great because it has a flat surface here for this to fit into. It does come with another spout too, which I took off. And then I refill it right here. Worked great. And I use it like a sink. I fill my tea kettle here. And a lot of times I'll use this small container as my sink to wash dishes and um, fill with some soapy water to take a sponge bath. Very handy. So when, I, when this water container needs to be refilled, I just unscrew this. I have a one gallon water container. You can buy these anywhere. I usually keep five of them in my car. I stow them down underneath here. And I just basically fill it like this. It's pretty simple. I really need to get a pot with a spout. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to wash my hair again today. And since I don't have a 
about and I love using my stove more than I love plugging this in although I have a lot of electricity in my um, jacker to use but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an extra step and I'm going to pour the water into here hot water into here and then I'm going to pour it into here because this is the jug that I use for washing my hair but I want to do warm water this morning instead of just cold from the container so that's the plan for today of how I'm going to heat the water but I mean if I had a funnel that would work too I may just do that temporarily until I can find a pot with a spout. And I know that they have them on Amazon. I just haven't ordered one yet. And I know I can pick up a funnel at any of the dollar stores around here. It's just easier for me right now. Plus a funnel would be really handy to have to fill the rest of this with the uh, other water. I think that's going to be the plan. There we go. So as you can see, my hair is pretty bad right now. And that's because it needs to be washed. So I have a shower tent. That's not a problem. Hey, Tim! What? More bang for your buck! <laughs> Can you help me? Sure. What do you need? Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of wind, and I need to anchor this down a little bit. And there's these straps here. I'm not really sure how to anchor it. Can you show me on that? All right. No. When it came out of the bag, it I looked like this. Did. Right. What you actually want to do is pull it out and this is where you're going to anchor it down to the ground because this ah. is an adjustable uh, part that okay you can adjust. see i didn't know that and this end will attach to the tent itself all right can we do one of them and show me sure. so you want to start as minimum as possible that way you have more adjustment okay I'm going to get out of the sun here, out of the shadow. So let me see. Oh, yeah. Tied it to where you, it's, it's supposed to be tied into the tent. So that way. Just with a square knot? Can so, this just stay on permanently? Yeah. Okay. That's why you want to, you can adjust this so it stays within the tent itself. Then okay. It won't be hanging out. So you want it tied permanently? Sure. If, you want, if you're not going to remove it, then you just. If there's no reason to remove it, I'd rather Double not. Double knot, triple knot, whatever, how many times you want to Okay. Do it, then it won't fly away on you. All right. So, you're going to go. So, make sure you tie that end first. Then you're going to find out where you're going to be able. That's why it's important to have a minimal loop here so you have more adjustment later. Okay. Take it down. Got to do it at an angle. Ah. So that was the key, was to loop that. Yep. Awesome. You might want to tie it as far as possible, but yeah. uh, I'm afraid you might not be able to get it out. So okay. then you adjust this. That's going to help a lot for the wind. And should I do all four or just where the wind's catching it? The best way to do is four. Well, all so four. It's easy to adjust it. Pull this and then move. Okay. And pull and move. And pull like and move. Yep. Oh, thank you so much. Want to do another one? Sure. All right. Once you know the basic, it's pretty fast. Okay. Tie it this end. If it call up corporate. <laughs> Let's see. Come on now. Go in. There you go. Triple uh, knot, double knot, whatever you want to do. Okay. But since it's going to stay here, you don't really care. Right. 
remember, pull out from here. Yes. So you have a little loop. Okay. I got it. it. What did I do with my hand? There it is. So you want to do kind of diagonal. Okay. See, I almost messed it up. So not that end, but this end. Oh, I see. You okay. can tell. See, when it pull, you pull it, it shouldn't be going down. If it go down, I mean, you didn't do it right. Okay. So, so there is a special end. Yep. Okay. And angle. <laughs> Stick it down. Nice. And then well, that ought to stay. Pull, pull, pull. pull. To put tension on this. See right now that's not a whole lot. You don't want to do it all yet. You want uh -huh. to do all four before you tension it. Okay, do all four first and then tighten it. Yep. Thank you so much right. for your help. So this is Tim again and his channel is More, more Bang for Your Buck. More Bang for Your Buck. M O B A N G <laughs> F O Y. You're probably going to type it in a second, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll put it across the screen. Thanks, Tim. And that's fine when I'm at a campsite, camping with others, or in a campground where there are a lot of people, maybe even not too many trees. But when I'm out and about, especially somewhere like in the forest or the desert, a little bit more difficult in the desert, but I like to just wash my hair by a tree or even sitting on the side of my car. Right now I am in the desert and I drove to another location because I was parked by several other vehicles. Let me just scan the area here for you a little bit so you can see what I mean. And I'm going to show you where I chose to come to wash my hair without the shower tent. So here I am, and in front of me there's a couple of RVs, trailers, things like that. There's a van over there, pretty far away. Nothing back in here. Couple little cars over in this way. And there we are back again. So the area that I chose is right here. Got some nice bushes. And right here I have my container. Another trick that people have done was to paint the container black. And what that does is when the sun hits it, the container absorbs the heat from the sun. That's why a lot of times you'll see those portable showers that people use. They're usually black. They hang them from their car, from a tree. That's the purpose of that. They do this a lot with the reflectics as well. One side is black, and that's for privacy, obviously. But you can put those up if it's cold outside during the day, and that will help to keep it warm inside. If it's hot outside and you want to keep your car cool, you would put the silver side out. So what I have done in the past is put my step stool out and lean my head forward to wash my hair. I can do that now, that's not a problem, but I am in such a private area that I am just going to sit on the edge of my car. I've done this numerous times before. So my process is I take my water, bend over, pour it on my head, shampoo, pour a little bit more water on my head to rinse it. I don't have to rinse it totally out. Then I put my conditioner I let it set for a little while and then I thoroughly rinse it out and I'm usually good with not quite this whole container about a half a gallon 
and uh, that seems to do the trick. And I just use this hand towel for drying. Um, I use this, I don't have a large towel, although I have a beach towel. This is what I use on um, for bathing and drying my hair and because it's easy to then open my front door, string a bungee cord across, and it dries very, very quickly. That's all I need as far as the towel goes. Then I use these little clips to clip my hair up, to give it a little bit of a style, let it dry, take it out. Now I've showed these clips in another video. I believe it's my maiden voyage video. Oh my goodness, way back in June of 2021. So I'm going to refer to that video. For showing you these clips and I'll go ahead and link that in the description I usually cook up oatmeal and you know it really doesn't take that long and yes I could do it here but honestly it would make a sticky mess in my pot and I don't necessarily want to clean that while I'm out camping so I've recently found that I like they have this um, raisin date and walnut from Quaker Oats that come in little packets and one is just not sufficient for me. So I like two, but two of these is too sweet. So what I've been doing is adding one regular oatmeal. This doesn't have, I don't know if it has any sweetener at all, but anyway, not as much as this does. So the combination of both of these together is perfect. So I usually have this with some coffee in the morning and I put them both in the same bowl add some hot water and stir it up and that's it it is very instant the coffee I use is just Folgers instant and I use non-fat dry milk for my cream I don't usually add any sugar to my coffee I think this is a sweet enough breakfast I love sitting back here on my couch. A little close, but I still have a little bit of headroom. All right, let's see. I'll show you these uh, candles here. Um, I want to give a shout out to RV Rebel Girl because uh, I saw her do this on one of her videos. So anyway, what this is, is is a candle. Oh, first of all, I got these at the Dollar Tree. They're coasters. And I thought the sayings were really, really cute. Do what you love and love what you do. Do all things with love. That's my favorite one. And life is a journey. Enjoy every moment. So this one I thought I would actually mount somewhere on my wall. So, But I got these coasters to put this on here. Because this is a candle. Now inside here... is Crisco and when this burns down I suppose that this just I don't know you know I'm gonna try it out so then what you're supposed to do so after you light it then you put this on and this actually lets off more heat I think we'll see how it goes I'm gonna try it tonight at first I was taking this cot and just putting it directly on my container here. Now inside this container is a candle wick and Crisco. Can you believe how cheap and easy this is to make? But what happened was I kept 
the candle kept going out because there was a little bit of airflow on the top but none coming up from the side and that's where I needed the air the most. So I happened to find and I don't know where you can get these. Somebody had set them out just at like a, a yard sale and I thought I wonder if these would work. So I got two of them and when I put them on like this it has this airflow in here and I believe maybe a little bit on the side here to where when I put the top on now it lifts it up a little bit and I can see right here I'm getting quite a bit in airflow now I think this is pretty much sealed around here but I'm getting airflow in through here into this through this gap don't go out there you go. A little bit higher. I'll try it there. It's going out a little bit. Oh, there we go. Let's try that. Let's see if that's better. Great. What happens is this terracotta pot gets warm and that creates heat within your room. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and light this one, too. It's great for the morning, too. And be really careful with flames in your vehicle. You don't want it to catch fire because you could lose everything. Yeah, you can see some air coming through there from the sides. So it's getting enough air. There you go. The cheapest, easiest candle heater system i've seen yet thumbs up and this hot water bottle it's a game changer and it's seriously the first time that i've used my tea kettle to warm the water up because it has a spout here where my pot does not um, it'd be great if i could find a pot that had a spout and I would just use my stove. I actually forgot I even had this until somebody mentioned their hot water bottle at a campfire last night. So the things that I showed you today, if I bought them on Amazon, I'll go ahead and I'll put a link for you. Also, I welcome your comments. See you on the road.